Hello everybody and welcome back to Fofessor. I'm a photography professor that teaches photography in Photoshop. So um, if you were seeing this video, you might have seen the one that I did before. It's a, a little bit more basic and covers uh, less tools, but it's just a basic way to restore an old photo. Um, why do we want to restore old photos? Well, um, you're, there'll be a time maybe where your parents or grandparents come to you and they've nicked or, or uh, damaged a photo they've got that they cherish. They can't find the negative for it or even the negative scratched and has some problems with it where it prints and it, but it prints badly um, with some, uh, some damages or tears. Um, most people I don't know have all their negatives for a lot of their important photos. So if it were to fall off the wall and get cracked or torn or broken, <clears throat> Your parents and grandparents are going to want somebody that can fix this or help them out. And you come to the rescue here. So um, let's talk first about some of the three things um, that happen um, to old photos that get, are, are going to really influence and affect how we, um, how, we, how we edit them. So this photo right here you're looking at is... Um, my grandpa dropped out of uh, school in, uh, when he was 15 and became a, uh, started working in the lumber industry as a logger in the woods. And um, this is a photo of one of the camp logging camps that he worked at uh, in the 1950s. Now, um, this photo here you'll see, if you look at the histogram, remember histograms? If you look at this histogram, in black, pure black is over here, pure white uh, zero, pure white is over here at 255, you'll see this histogram is just muddy light grays right because here's middle gray so these are all uh, middle to light grays going toward white so we know right now that the contrast is gone there are no true blacks and no true whites so one of the first things we need to fix in an old photo that's washed out um, and maybe have some damage where it's faded is fix the contrast so we're going to fix the contrast first and then you'll notice there's these dots and stuff all over the place, right? These little black dots. And there's little white specks on some of the shadow areas in here. And then there's a hair, right? And there's a tear down here somewhere I saw. Where's that tear? Right here, there's a tear. And there, right there is the one too, where something happened where a, a sharp object came across this print, right? So you're gonna see that we need to fix all these little things. Um, because um, we need to clean it up. And so if we ever print it again from a, a Photoshop original, uh, we'll have made a cleaner, more, um, a nicer, sharper image, right? So the dust, the creases, the contrast, and then we're gonna try colorizing it just for fun. This is a black and white photo that never had any color. Um, so we're just gonna play with it and see what we can get. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this photo um, back into uh, Camera Raw by going to the filter, the Camera Raw filter right there and I'm gonna adjust the contrast I'm gonna see if I can't bring this contrast back and I'm looking at my histogram up again up here and it's just awful so I'm gonna bring contrast way up and see if I can't bring this contrast up more I'm gonna bring my highlights up a little bit I'm gonna drop my shadows down because I'm, I'm missing these blacks right I have no blacks in it I'm gonna dump my blacks really hard like this and see if I can't get it to where my blacks are closer over here. Now here's your black, right? It's zero. Our blacks are now creeping over a little bit. Well, we're going to have some true black in here somewhere. And now we do. We finally hit true black right here on the edge, which means the horse, oh, two, 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 I think. That's closest. That's almost zero, 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 which means there's almost no detail there. Okay. So I'm going to bring my highlights up a little bit. I'm going to bring my whites up a little bit. Because remember, I want the whites on one side and the blacks on the other so I can push this histogram and get true white and true black. And this is looking pretty contrasty. Okay, it's sort of where I wanted it. I'm going to add a little bit of texture for sharpness, just a couple little points. And then I'm going to add some clarity to boost the midtone contrast a little bit. And I think if I look at this guy right here, he looks pretty good. That might even be my grandpa. Maybe not. I'll have to ask my mom. But this looks pretty good to me, okay? You might leave a little more highlight. Okay. Whites might whites could probably give you pushed a little more. Yikes, not too much. And blacks. Let me see how this looks. Hmm. 
Yeah, looks pretty good. That looks better. Looks like a sharper, more black and white. Interesting photo. My sky's still wiped out, but now I still have some information there. And I'll come back to my sky and I'll, I'll remove some of these things and we'll fix that. So I'm going to open this up, hit OK, bring it back into Photoshop. And the first thing I see, you guys, are, gosh, are what? Are these blobs, these black blobs all over the place, right? These little black things against white. Now, Photoshop's got a great tool to take out anytime there's some contrast where there's like black against white or down here, we've these got these white scratches against dark, right? So anytime there's that huge contrast like that, Photoshop can find it re relatively easy with a filter. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is make a new layer. And we're going to call this layer by hitting Command J. We're going to call this layer um, Dust Scratch. Okay, and we're going to work some dust and scratches on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go filter. I'm going to go down to noise. I'm going to go dust and scratches. And, and you'll see, look at all those things. Watch this. If I take the preview off, look at all the little things down in here and stuff that completely disappear. And this black dot right here, watch. See that? They wipe out. The problem is, if you look, see all the shadow elements that were here? Those are gone too, which I want. But the sky looks really good. See that? Now, the radius is how many pixels it affects. The threshold, the more this gets, the more levels it gets, the sharper it gets, and your stuff comes back. The slower this gets, it gets really, really soft and fuzzier and fuzzier. So you're gonna have to play with this yourself and see how you like it. I like it right here because if I brought my levels down, right, you can see it here, it's gonna get real fuzzy and soft and this'll get really nice. But the problem is, is these guys, if I preview it, are gonna change to that, which is sort of like a, almost like a, a pencil drawing, right? You'll see like little scratch marks and stuff as I bring the sharpness back up. This almost looks like a little pencil drawing or some kind of, impressionistic drawing. Sort of cool. Okay. That's not our intention today. So we're going to bring this back up to 58. And yeah, these guys still look sort of junky, right? But don't fear the sky looks good in other places do and I'm going to mask it anyway. Okay. So if I click OK, I like that. Um, it wiped out a lot of the shadows down in here, you'll see. It also wiped out all the shadows in the, the roof. So I'm going to go through and mask this. And because it's a white mask, I'm gonna fill it with black by hitting Option Delete. And now you'll see everything came back how it was. And I'm gonna use a white brush by hitting X and hitting my B for brush. And I'm gonna use a white brush with my tablet and my pen and I'm gonna go through and wipe all this out up here. So if you just go like this and use your uh, space bar to move around and navigate, you can come in here and really wipe out the hardest parts of this whole thing without having to go through and spot every single one, which would take you like a long time. And I didn't cover this in the intro version because I wanted you to get used to the tools of doing this. So if you're hating me right now, because you went through and spotted every tiny little single dot uh, on a photo, um, I apologize, but guess what? You're probably super good at using the, uh, the clone stamp, the patch tool, and all the other things I was talking about in that video, right? So don't hate me completely, just a little bit. A little hate's all right, right? So I'm gonna remove these guys and all this white stuff in here to the best of my ability. I'm gonna take it down just so it's not competing, right? That blob looks like a blob. These little white flecks on him look like white flecks. So I'm gonna hit that, 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 that a little bit. Anywhere, you guys, is there's a contrast where it's light on dark and dark on light, you'll see. It'll work. And I think it does a pretty good job. So I'm hitting this guy's pretty good. Let's see. Ah, the horse has got a scratch on him. See, look at this. I can take that scratch right off. But you don't want to take the reins off, right? The horse would run away. That is ridiculous. Horses are very skittish animals. So yeah, this looks pretty good in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, since this is out of focus back here, I don't really care if there's anything going on back here. So I'm gonna 
be a little hasty and come through and just wipe out any of this stuff in here. I can't see his face anyway. I'm sorry if that's your relative. Um, he's probably not around anymore and neither is probably his, or his children. This is so old. Um, so I think we're good actually. Yeah. So go through and use dust and scratches first and try to remove any, any of these hard little like, uh, lines and things you find, uh, tears maybe, uh, but mostly, mostly you guys, it's, it's the little white specks on the dark and dark specks on the light. That's going to, that you're going to like find to help you with this where you'll find this helps a ton. Okay. So I'm going around fixing it. That blob just disappeared. Righteous, right? I'm gonna take some blobs out of my hay, but not all of them because I like the I like the um, the shadows and light in there. I think this looks pretty good. If I find some other ones later on, uh, yeah, just let me know, <laughs> and I'll go back and fix it. Just kidding, I won't. Okay, I think that looks that's feeling pretty good. Again, ease your workload by using this. It actually takes um, a lot of time off of spot spotting stuff and making everything like perfect with a clone stamp or a patch tool. I'm gonna shrink this back down and think to myself that looks looks pretty awesome. And you'll see some spots that didn't actually work, um, and we're gonna fix those in a second. Okay, so I got that done. I like that. I'm going to flatten my image now <coughs> so I can work on it a little better um, and just flatten and get this out of the way. I like it. Command shift E. I flatten it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the patch tool. So command J. I'm going to call this layer patch. P-A-T-C-H, right? You can spell it however you want. And I'm going to grab this patch tool right here. And this is where I'm going to go, you guys, and start pulling and grabbing any texture that I think is out of place or doesn't look like the surrounding texture, like that, and this. And I'm just gonna lasso it with my left click. I'm using a tablet and a pen right now, um, and I'm just gonna drag it somewhere where I feel like the uh, texture looks similar, right? Um, so basically I'm looking for something a little more uniform than this, and if I see a blob, the blob should be gone, right? So I'm taking this out. And it looks pretty good, right? So again, any little blob, any little texture piece that you think is a little bit, uh, doesn't look so great or looks like it's out of place or, you know, maybe just, I don't know, maybe it's a tear, right? And it looks bad. But I'm thinking I, I'm doing a pretty good job already. Like, yeah, not to pat myself on the back here, but um, that's looking pretty good. Now, if you'll see, um, I come over here and I'll uncheck this, and you'll see all the stuff I'm taking off, right? So use the patch tool, you guys, on this. Um, yeah, I would also I would also use the um, healing brush and clone stamp if you want, right? Uh, the clone stamp I'd use to recreate some things that you need. Um, I take some of these bigger blobs off, like this in here you could probably use the patch tool for, right? And just find some more texture. Okay. Like these guys, I'd probably use patch. Um, let's see. These in here where you have a line that is, is a scratch or something that crosses the line, it's crossed the line, right? I would use the probably the clone stamp. That way you have a in uh, I'm hitting option. I'm hitting option. I'm left clicking or tapping with my tablet. Uh, let's see, current layer. It's one fun thing about doing videos is things that go wrong. You're like, okay, do I? I don't feel like that's doing anything. Yeah, things that go wrong when you're doing a video, you're like, dude, do I just like redo this entire thing? Right? 
Or do I figure out real quickly why, there we go, why this isn't working or why this is not working? So yeah, so I would I, you can use the clone stamp, you guys, and clean some of this stuff up. Is that why it's doing that? I think that is. There, that's better. It's just taking my computer a zillion years to like fix this. So, uh, yeah. Clone stamp is good. You guys do some of this stuff. The healing brush also works great. Here we have a disaster area. Okay. Yeah, I see what's happening. My computer's running a little bit like slow, I think. It's like not happy with me, so that's why. I'm getting all this nast, and it's going flipping slower than I usually like. There. So you'll see with the clone stamp, you can actually replace the shadow and stuff on it, um, and sit here and tweak and geek to your heart's content. Right. Oh, I know. I think I, I know what I did. I know why this is doing this. I went and adjusted my pen settings a while back. And it, I set it to like, <laughs> I, I did, I know what's happening. I set it to um, my pen to pressure because I thought it would be better for me when I draw and when I like uh, do lettering and stuff. I thought it'd be better to use pressure because then you can actually see how the brush strokes of, the, of like calligraphy and stuff should work. Uh, when you lightly touch something and have a, um, um, a light stroke and then when you really hit it heavy and have a heavier stroke. And so I set it to pressure and I have... I forgot I did that, and I've not been. You, I realized I have to push hard. I'm gonna have to adjust that again. That was annoying. For a second, I was like, "Dude, my clone stamp doesn't work." This is awesome. That would normally happen. If I were in class, that would happen, right? Stuff like that happens in class all the time. And I'm like, okay, well, class is over. Class is dismissed. Everybody can go home and I'll try to figure this out. Just kidding. They sit there and they wait. Wait for me. Okay. So I'll go through and fix stuff like that with my clone stamp, you guys. Uh, healing brush works too. The clone gives a pixel for pixel uh, reproduction, an exact copy of whatever's next to it. Okay. And, um, oh, yay. And uh, the... Um, the healing brush actually uses sort of an AI type thing and gets uh, pull stuff that is near it. Okay, so let's see. Healing brush, if you guys want to do it. Again, I'm just taking out spots, you guys, and stuff, right? But like, let's say this white stuff on this guy's uh, overalls, you like this, and you hold Alt or option down and select over here and then just go like this and it'll try to recreate what it thinks it should be there and it does a pretty good job you know see so you guys are going to use a clone stamp patch tool healing brush and dust and scratches for this first part, okay? To sort of like start cleaning your image up and your photo up. Looks pretty good. It's starting to look better, right? Ah, you know what I actually failed to do? That sucks. Okay, so. Looks like I moved the image. No, let's put that back. Looks like, see how this watches. Looks like I moved the image during my during my thing. I'm not sure how I did that. But that's super fun. Okay, that looks good. So, uh, there's my patchwork, right? My patchwork, my clone stamp, and my... Um, you know, what's great about Photoshop and doing video videos is you realize that um, if somebody does a perfect video and does perfectly, uh, that's great, but that's not realistic. 
Because when you're working with Photoshop, problems happen all the time. You bump something, you push the wrong key, uh, you got to go back and undo something. So a workflow where you're sort of undoing things here and there, that seems to me more of a realistic workflow um, than, uh, than going right through and achieving perfection every time. That is simply not, not the case. I don't care how good you are. Um, you're a human and humans have error and we make errors despite Photoshop being cool. And yeah, so um, yeah, so be prepared for errors that I'm gonna try to fix as I go along from, that I, that I self-inflict, right? So um, that is dust, we did dust and, pat, dust and scratches. Uh, we have a healing brush, we've used clone stamp, we've used the um, patch tool. Um, in my last video I covered using an ink, the, the color sampler tool and then painting on your, the pixels next to it, which really works well. Um, if you wanna know how to do that, you can go back and see that video. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna make a dodge and burn layer because we're gonna go through and dodge and burn like we normally would, which would be to increase contrast and stuff on faces and things like that. I'm gonna do this guy right here, who could be my grandpa, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna find the shadows and stuff in here and reinforce them. So I'm gonna make a curve layer I'm gonna make it shadows and dark, right? Like that, and push this up to get my shadows darker to taste. And then I'm gonna make sure my foreground color is black. I'm gonna have option delete, and I'm gonna call this shadows. And I'll do one in a second for my lights too, probably. Um, I might need some of those. But for right now, I'm gonna work on my mask here with white and with a brush. I'm gonna paint in some of the shadows to make them a little more contrasty, right? And these are, we're gonna use a little more local adjustments to do this. So, um, and that's too black. So I'm gonna go up here and make sure my opacity on my brush is a little lower so I can build it up. And we're gonna come in here and paint some of these shadows in, right? To make this a little darker and bring some shadow back on the side of his face and stuff in here. Right under his eye, underneath the brim of his hat. Right, he is a, an old time logger, right? And he looks like he's gonna take our lunch money, honestly. This guy's back here with no joke, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm just increasing the shadows around his pants and stuff and on his jacket to give a little more sense of contrast because remember, we lost a lot of our contrast. So I'm coming back and putting some stuff in the shadows to give him a little more contrast that I feel like he might need. Okay. I'm shading the side and highlighting the other. So this is just an example, right, of, of one guy um, adding some shadows and highlights back in. I could do it to the wood here too and put some shadows back in on this side. Same thing for this wood. And let's increase our opacity touch, right, and add some shadow back in here because we know that shadows and highlights are what make thing, what makes things look 3D. So we're gonna just paint these little logs with some shadow and bring their detail back in, right? Righteous, so this is looking really good. I'm gonna bring the logs back in a little bit, bring some shadow back in here, add some shadow where there may not have been as much. See that? a little darkness there, add some tonality back in. There you go. And we're adding some wood stack, wood stock, wood stock, dude, dumb. We're adding some wood stack. It sounds just like wood stock. If you're videoing yourself, you say all kinds of awesome stuff that you want to be like, dude, I need to take that back, but I just flipping uh, video like recorded like 20 minutes and I'm not doing this again so I don't care okay there's a shoe that I lost yeah it's looking really crunchy and really blackish and white right so now I'm gonna add a highlight layer and go back and pull some highlight put some highlights on him so here we go curve layer this time we're gonna push some highlights up in there, uh, highlights them in there, there we go, like that. We're gonna hit X and make that our foreground color. We're gonna hit Option Delete 
and fill the maps with black. And then we're gonna call this highlights like that. And with our white, we're gonna paint some highlights back in. So here we go, right? This is a highlight. Oh, it's 100, oh, it's really high. There we go, bring it down to about, I usually paint you guys about anywhere from 10 to 20%, depending on how fast I'm going. And on this, I should probably go down to about 10 or 15, but I'm not going to. Okay. Where's the other dude? You need some highlights too, my friend. Now I do this, you guys, you'll say, well, this looks really like heavy handed or really, uh, you know, you really were going crazy on this and wow. And you know, geez, it looks really, really, uh, obvious. Right. And you tell you say that you don't want a really obvious, uh, edit because then it looks like you edited it. Right. We're supposed to be like, sort of like, a serial killer, right? You don't leave any trace of anything you've done behind. And this dude definitely looks like uh, he's been he's been highlighted and shadowed and dodged and burned and et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, yeah, well, I have a response to that. And it is, I'm gonna go back to shadows and give this guy who is possibly my grandpa a little more of a hat. Um, yeah, you guys, I do that. I, I hit it really hard initially, right? And then I um, I back it off, right? So I'll, I'll either drop the opacity on this after I blow it up and look at it, right? Or I'll group them and do them together. Oops, Command G to group. And if I shrink this down, I can see how this looks. And he does look more contrasted, but dude, he, does, he looks better. He stands out, right? I like it. Not to mention, I'm gonna do the stuff behind him, right? So, um, if I click this off, you can see there's before, there's after. Before, after, before, after. I'm adding contrast. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the shadows again, you guys, and I'm gonna put some shadows behind them because these trees I feel like should be a little more black. So I'm gonna go through and really start darkening these up to give them a little black background to stand against and I think that'll help with stuff. So I'm gonna add some darkness back in here to these trees. I'll give a little chiaroscuro with the highlights and the shadows over here on this hay. Out of here, out. See that? Bringing some detail back in. I'm gonna do this on the top of the roof too. You'll just wait and see. Right in here. See that? There we go. Bring the pipe stack back in a little bit. Sorry, dude. I just totally wiped him out. I might bring him back in. This needs to be a little darker in here too. Let's bring him back. Just gently hit him. He's not very, uh, what do you call it? He's not super important anyways. So, so yeah, I'm just hitting around some of these trees, right? And bring this stuff back. Looks a little better. Again, watch. Cut into my shadows and click. Shadows got darkened. Things look a little better to me. I like this. I need the shadow into here a little bit better. A little more contrast down there. Right? And add some contrast to this. Hey, feels a little better. There. Okay. So after I've done that and I've done my burning and dodging on the image with all these dudes, um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna to try to colorize this, okay? Now, to colorize something, it's not actually not that hard. Um, it just takes being a little bit of an artist. Some of us are, some of us are not. I actually, I think this is a little too much in terms of dodging and burning. So remember how I said I'm really heavy handed initially? Well, I'm gonna turn the whole thing down. So I'm gonna drop this down a little bit and drop the opacity of both those layers. That looks better. There, okay. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna to try to paint his shirt. I'm going to give him a dark red shirt and blue jeans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this uh, blue jeans. 
and I'm going to set this mode, blend mode, to color. Okay. Oh, guess what? I can't set it to color. That's because the image is black and white. So let's go up to the image and go to image mode and, and turn this into RGB color. Don't flatten. And now this is a color image. Okay. So color, blue jeans, blue jeans are blue. So let's come up here and find uh, some blue. And I'm going to go like a darker navy. Actually, let's make them worn out blue jeans. Let's get in here, like this sort of teal looking. Right, we're just going to give them a little bit. And then we're going to paint directly on them. I'm going to bring this down a little bit to lower opacity. And I'm going to put some color in the blue jeans. Right? So let's just add some color in here. Pretty good. I'm just painting on the blue jeans themselves. And this is almost like color, you know, coloring with like a coloring book. That's awesome. Now remember, the light part should be lighter and the dark part should be a little darker, right? So don't keep going over stuff until oh, I jack that up. I'll fix it in a second. Until it's all one color because it should all there should all be highlights and shadows that are slightly different, right? So these highlights and shadows look pretty good. His boots are probably brown, if I'm thinking, right? This looks pretty good, but guess what also? Also looks super fake. So I'm going to um, drop the opacity of this, like in there, and I feel like that looks pretty good. But also, colors, you guys, and things we have, uh, and the shadows is going to be a darker blue, and the edges on the highlights is going to be lighter blue. So I'd, I would honestly work like this. I would go and make a new layer, right? I would set the blend mode to color, and I would call this um, jeans dark. And I'd make a dark blue one for the dark dark parts, right? So here's the same blue. Let's go up and make this a little, let's go down and make this a little darker, like that. And now in the shadows, I'm gonna put some of that dark blue, right? Like in here and stuff. Like here. And the shadows down there and stuff. And I'm gonna just sort of go through and hit just the shadows only with this different color, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a lighter blue because in the lighter blue, it's almost wiped out, right? And I'm going to come up here and come to this like lighter blue-ish. I don't want it to be cyan. I want it to be like in here like baby blue, like that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that color. I'm going to make another layer. Did I set this to color? I did. I'm going to set this to color, blend mode. And I'm going to call this uh, jeans light. And so the light parts of the jeans, the highlights, I'm going to paint a little bit of this. Okay? So like on this side, I'm going to come in here and paint highlights. So you see how it's starting to have different shades of blues everywhere? That's what normal like colors look like, especially on skin too. And it looks a little corny right now. But watch. So now I'm going to drop these opacities until they start to blend in a little better and look better. Dark jeans, going to get down a little bit. Like right there. And the blue jeans is at 52. That's pretty good. I can hardly see any change here. I probably should have made those a little darker. Like that. And here's the highlights. Right? And the highlights are there. Or there. I'm gonna bring them down so that just they just have minimal stuff in them, right? There's his jeans. Now it still again looks a little bit too colored, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these, all these jeans. I'm gonna hit by holding shift down and selecting them over here, and I'm gonna hit command G. I'm gonna call these the jean group. Jeans color. Okay. And then I'm gonna drop the opacity the whole thing at once. And just gently drop it. Like that. 
And that to me looks a little better. It even looks still too colorful. So I'm gonna drop it some more. The entire group. I don't want it to look gray, but I don't want it to look too colorful. So about 47%, right? That looks pretty good. I wonder if we set this whole thing to color. Actually, you know what? I think there's another one that looked better. I think overlay and soft light look really good, you guys. I'd say run soft light on it. Watch. Yeah, I feel like soft light looks more authentic. Yeah. So let's do a red shirt now, right? Same thing is going to happen. We're going to go color. We're going to need a new layer. I'm going to call this dark red on his shirt. And we're going to change it and find a red that we like. I'm going to go like super dark crimson down here like that. I'm going to paint the entire shirt like this. I'll probably paint just the shadows now that I like. I'm liking this. Again, I'm doing this really sloppy. I know. Thanks. There we go. Paint that area. I can mask it out and take this out if I want, guys, in a minute. Okay. And now I'm going to do another layer. Oh, I need to set this to soft light. Remember, soft lights are friend. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. That's delicious. Okay. Next one we're going to do mid reds. Mid reds. We're going to change our reds up a little bit and come up here like that. We're going to paint this in the other spots, right? Like that. Like that. A little patchiness here and there with the red shirt. I'm going to make this soft light. Right? Looks good. And then we're going to have a highlights. Red highs. I want to take this red, le left click on it twice, come up here and drag this up. So we got some red highlights. And now we're going to paint with those. Any place we see a highlight. set this to what soft light I like soft light better I thought I'd like color for a minute but I like soft light better you guys I'm sorry it just feels better okay nope yeah now if we blow this back down and look at it he's looking pretty good I still think though that looks a little bit too much so I'm gonna left click grab all these at once with a left click and shift I'm gonna hit command G I'm going to group this into shirt color and I'm going to drop the opacity on the whole thing. Like that. I don't want any gray coming through, right? But that looks pretty good. There you go. Skin color, you guys, just as an FYI, um, on skin, I would do layers of red, yellow, and orange on skin to make skin look good. Okay, just to give you a little hint, um, skin is made up of red and yellows, and red and yellow make orange, so go reds, yellows, and oranges, or you can grab a photo, bring it in, and use the dropper tool and sample that skin color of the photo, and use that color on the skin color if you want accurate skin color. Okay, so 
that's how I would do that. I would color it. The last thing you guys I think I'd do is I would sharpen areas of it with high, a high pass. <coughs> so I would, um, how would I want to do that? I'd probably hit Command Option Shift E and make a new layer that adds up all the layers and all the things below, right? And then I'd go Filter, Noise, or I'd go Filter, Other, High Pass, and add a high pass, a little sharpness to this, right? And so I'd make it like right about in there, so it sharpens things a touch. Okay, and then I'd go and I'd set this to, I think I can set it to soft light from up here and make it work. A soft light. And now it's super, it's super, super sharp, right? I sharpen the whole thing. Um, that's great, but I don't know if I want to sharpen the whole thing, so I'm going to mask this. I'm going to hit, uh, change that with X to black and hit Option Delete and fill the mask with black. And you can see the sharpness is taken away. There it goes. And now with white and a brush, I'm just going to bring in areas that I think should be a little sharper, right? That have lost a little bit of sharpness. Like this guy a little bit. This guy is in the foreground. He needs some little sharpness. Let's bring that in more. And you can see now his stuff's looking a little sharper and more contrasty. See his hand? Watch. See their faces and hands and stuff? They're looking a little sharper. His garments and anything with texture, you guys, will look a little sharper, which will help out a lot. Okay. That looks like it's... Uh, I'm going to leave that guy alone. Go back to white. I'm going to bring these, these in a little bit, this texture here. That might be a little much. I can always drop the opacity of this layer if I feel like I've got, I've got a little too much. And I did on him. Let's undo that a little bit with put painting the white back on him. But like stuff like um, like wood, the wood looks good. It'll, it'll, it'll be sharp and nice. Like in here, I can sharpen that a little bit. Objects that aren't faces and skin tend to sharpen pretty well. This foreground needs to be sharpened. It's completely like wiped out and gross in here. So I'd go in here and like bring some detail back into this. Up in here might want some detail. And again, if it's too much, you'll see it. It'll start to break down a little bit, okay? So, it looks pretty good though. Okay, and that's pretty much the last thing you guys I would do is I would sharpen a little bit. And if, again, if it's too much for you, take the opacity and drop the opacity down. See how that slider is making them a little more contrasty and not? And you can drop it down a little bit, okay? And that's how I would start the whole process of colorizing this photo, okay? So, background, you guys, you, you duplicate your background, you make a dust and scratches layer, right? You take out the easy dust and scratches, you flatten that, you start, um, you start using your healing brush and your clone stamp, you use your patch tool to take out creases and, and little elements of stuff here and there that the dust and scratches missed. And then you dodge and burn it to bring some local detail contrast back in to some of the faces and some of the places you want to dodge and burn to bring, again, dimension and shape and form back into the shot that was wiped out uh, when it just went to mid-gray. And then you, uh, yeah, you'll want to color your photo. You can change it to an RB, RGB. Uh, color space and you can use color on it and use color blend mode if you want or soft light I used um, and then you can sharpen with high pass okay when you're finished and this is what your photo well yours will be better and you'll have um, everything will be colored beautiful but um, uh, but this is what your photo will look like in the end um, it'll start looking really great and you'll love it so until next time um, Keep shooting, keep editing, and, and keep getting better, right? It takes practice every day.